If you want more information, I'm on Twitter at CryptoManRun. And a reminder that if you are watching us on YouTube, hit the subscribe button now. Some call him the most powerful man in crypto. We think he may be one of the most powerful people today in the entire world. Chao Peng Zhao is the founder of Binance and he's with me in a special edition of Crypto Trader. CZ, so good to have you. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. So you announced it's a big anniversary today. What is the anniversary that you guys are celebrating today? So last year on this day, July 2nd, we finished our ICO. So we raised 15 million US dollars worth of cryptos on our hands. A year later, you've taken the $15 million and today it's $1.5 billion. And you're buying back the tokens. Yes. Why are you buying back the tokens? So, uh, yes, so basically a year ago, we sold half of our tokens, uh, of the total, so half of our total supply. And as part of our white paper, our promise is to use 20% of our profits each quarter, buy them back, and then burn them. So now we burn, we're buying them back at 100x price. So a year ago, if you paid me a dollar, now we, um, we, we, we're giving you $100, buying them back. So you got a lot of people smiling. Yes. yes so let's go back a little bit. When did you start Binance and what made you start Binance? Right, so actually this idea is kind of old. Uh, even as early as 2013, when I first learned about crypto, I thought about this two type of exchanges where you can have crypto to crypto, uh, and that's kind of a, in a, in a complete island and then you have the fiat to crypto. Um, so in 2013, we wanted to do it, and we said too early. 2015, we, uh, when I left OKCoin, I wanted to do it, but we look at the market. At that time, Polonex was there, um, but we said it was still too early, the, the volume's quite small. And 2017, we took a look, we said, oh, the market's pretty big, we gotta do it. So it's not a new idea, we've been thinking about it for quite a while, it's just the timing of it, we decided to do it on 2000, in 2017. Well, they say timing is everything, and I guess you're living proof that timing is everything. What do you think were the biggest factors in your success? Oh, I think timing is, is a very, very big factor. I think luck is a very big factor, to be honest, for any successful per people or person or company. Um, and, uh, but at the same time, I think we, 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 people think of Binance as one year, but we actually it's really 20 years for us. So you've been thinking about exchanges and working in exchanges, financial exchanges for the last 20 years? Uh, me, personally, yes, and uh, most of, uh, uh, more than half of my core team have been with me for 10 years, have been following, like working with me for 10 years in the tra trading space. Um, and, uh, and even before Binance, for the last but two years before Binance, we were developing trading systems, exchange systems. So we had a product ready even before Binance. So Binance is kind of new, but we had the systems ready, we had a team, and then we didn't have customer support, we didn't have marketing, but uh, we added those two pieces as part of Binance. But, quite a lot of it was done before. So we had a lot of preparation and we worked really, really hard. And in one year, you became what is the biggest exchange today and it's made you one of the most powerful people in crypto. Why do you think people came to Binance as opposed to the other exchanges? What was it about Binance that attracted everyone to Binance? So I think there's a, a couple of different angles. On one, angle, on one part is the more fundamental part, which is you gotta have a good product, good service. Um, I think our service is okay, to be honest, it's not perfect. I really want to improve it, but I think in the industry we're kind of good uh, compared to others. Um, but I think uh, the other big part is, uh, is your ethical, uh, your, your behavior. So we want to, uh, there's, a lot of, uh, 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 there's a lot of dodgy stuff that goes on in the crypto space. We want to be the most uh, ethical, most proper exchange. So uh, that's our philosophy. We really want to protect users. We actually don't say that a lot uh, publicly, but people, people, people understand it, people are smart. So people, people tell other people we're, uh, we're a good exchange. We actually use our power, we have a lot of responsibility. We have to use our power very carefully. We're very careful about the projects we support because whichever one we say we support, everybody rushes in. We bear the responsibility. Now how big is the operation today? How many people work at Binance today? So today I think we're under 250 people. I think we're 238, 39 people, uh, the, the, the total team size. Compared to other exchanges, I think most of the other exchanges in the top 10 are more than 1,000 people. So we have a very small team. So you arguably, arguably are now the number one exchange in the world. What's your strategy going forward? So I think basically crypto is just the beginning. Uh, 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 we're just at the beginning of the crypto space. There's a lot more coins coming up. There's a lot of stuff going, coming, come, uh, there's, there's a lot of good projects. So I think as an exchange, we're the liquidity provider. Uh, if you think about cryptocurrency, the blood of the economy, we're the heart, we're pumping the blood, right? So we're making everything circulate. So I think our job is to identify good projects, help them, and so this is why we have the Binance Labs, which invest in earlier stage projects. 
We have Launchpad, which is an ICO platform. We, we haven't really used it too much because we're too busy with Exchange, so we, we want to push that. Uh, we also have a lot of social responsibility. So we now have a Binance Charity Foundation. We have made a few uh, donations in Africa already. Um, so there's a lot of stuff. And also Binance uh, Academy, which is a research uh, arm for Binance. And also Binance Info, which is an information distribution uh, platform. So all of those stuff, I'm actually not too involved. I'm mean, only involved on the exchange part, because that's the only thing I know how to do. I, I want to hire the best people to run those other uh, uh, branches or departments, um, and I just do what I do best. Now, you talk about all using Binance Coin, and there was news earlier this year that you guys are launching a decentralized exchange. Yes. What's the logic of launching a decentralized exchange if you are the biggest centralized exchange? Right, so I, I, I believe that um, decentralized exchange is the future. Uh, I don't know when that future will come here yet. So again, I think we're at an early stage for that. So um, I don't know if it's a year, two years, three, five, three years, five years, I don't know. But we got to be ready for it. So we're, we're, now, we're now actively investing our efforts, our time into it. We have a dedicated team working on this. I'm hoping to see a prototype within a couple months. So you, do you see the decentralized exchange eventually eliminating the current centralized exchange? Um, I think this, de this depends on how long, you, how, what, what time frame you're looking at. If you're talking about five to ten years, I think yeah. Uh, and yeah. is this because of security issues and hack issues? Or is it a much bigger thing? Uh, I think it's a much bigger thing. Uh, this is, uh, I think centralized exchanges right now have much higher efficiency, so much higher trading volume. And that actually, today, I think Binance is probably more secure than decentralized exchanges. I think that's a misconception for people. But decentralized exchanges will give you more freedom, right? So you can be more anonymous in terms of your trading. You don't, ha you don't have to hold your assets on the exchange. It doesn't necessarily mean that you, you, it's, safer, it's, more, it's safer for you. You just think you have more control, yeah. right? The performance of decentralized exchanges will always be slower than centralized ones because if you have a thousand computers synchronizing with each other versus one computer that just processes it and we're done with it, if the, the decentralized one will be slower. But once they're fast enough, I think many of the volume may over. But I think that's going to take a couple of years. I want to segue a little bit because I know our viewers are watching this and they're saying, I want to get my coin listed on Binance. Uh -huh. I was watching you walking and every two minutes someone comes up to you and says, will you list my coin on Binance? What's the process? Who decides? How do you make those decisions? Right. So I'm actually no longer involved in those decisions at all. We have a team, which is called a research team. They were, uh, so peop there's only one way to submit listings. But the guys coming, to, coming up to me and telling me, hey, explaining a project to me, does nothing. I mean, there's nothing I can decide in like oh, one minute, two minutes, uh, even one day. I, in order to learn about a project, you've got to look at the white paper, read it, understand it, play with the products, research the community, look at the source code on GitHub, look at the community reviews on uh, Reddit. So there's a lot of stuff going on. So, but fundamentally, we look for three things. We look for a good team, ideally a team with history. Team with ability, it's kind of hard to tell if they're going to do the right thing or wrong thing. But team with a good history tends to carry on. And um, we look for products. So you, if you just have a concept, um, it's good. But we, I think Binance is kind of slowly no longer listing concept coins. We're, we're too big. If you, if you just have a concept, you can list on a smaller exchange first. And we can, see, we can monitor the performance if you want. So you like. actually want the product to be working? Yes. And not only that, we want the product to have users. So that's the third thing. So we actually check how many users you have. So we, we, we don't publish any hard standards. So for example, you have to have, like, say, 10,000 users in Telegram. Because if we say that, people are just going to invite, incentivize people to join the Telegram group. People or or buy here. Telegram groups, which are existing. Yes, yes. So we don't publish any hard metrics, but fundamentally, if you have a good project, we will list it, right? And and we don't allow other, we don't we don't have a contact person for you to talk to, because for any uh, people come up to me and say, hey, it's easy, I'll give you twenty million dollars to list my coin. I'm like, I don't need that money. Thank you. Well, let's, that brings me to my next question. There have been allegations that exchanges charge absorbent listing fees. We've heard in some cases that it's five million dollars per trading pair. Does Binance charge listing fees? So we do, and, but what we do is that we, we don't negotiate and we don't, we don't ask for a price. The project team, when they submit the application, they tell us what they want to pay. And you can say zero, which we will accept. And we have listed coins that, that, that said zero. But is it a case that if I tell you that I want to pay $1 million, that I have a, a better chance of being listed on Binance? Uh, actually, so uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a sweet spot of, of uh, the money you pay. Uh, we actually, like if it's too high, we actually get worried. If you want to pay us like 20 million US dollars, it's like, huh, who would want to pay us 20 million dollars? Who would be that eager to list a coin? Yeah. Most likely some scam. 
right? So uh, too high is actually not too good. There's a sweet spot somewhere. Uh, zero is okay too. We list a few coins that said zero, and because they're great projects, we list them. So it's a free market. Uh, I wouldn't say where the sweet spot is, but it's not that high. Uh, we list coins for a very fairly low fees. Now, there's this big rush today around these transactional mining tokens. Yeah. We've had Fcoin. Fcoin has given uh, investors these huge returns. Yeah. Are you a believer of transaction mining? So I think transaction mining, the concept is okay, uh, but it's actually in reality, it doesn't work. Um, uh, the model just, just, just doesn't compute once people see through it. So the model is that they pay back 100% or 80% as dividends. So actually what they're doing is that they're getting to a point where in the future they're only going to charge 20% of the actual transaction fees. Yeah. Can an exchange sustain itself on 20% of the transaction fees? I think the exchange can sustain, uh, we have seen zero fees. The exchange can sustain that. They, 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 they do derivatives, margins, futures, lending. Um, the other business models. Um, and we have seen Maker Taker where the exchange pays you to trade. Uh, we've seen that on NASDAQ, we've seen that uh, elsewhere. So there's a lot of different financial models. But the uh, trade mining, uh, if you look at the logic today, it doesn't really work. So you, uh, you trade, let's say you pay 100 BTC in, in, in your fees. That 100 BTC goes to the, uh, uh, gets dividend distributed out to somebody, right? Yes. Now, the, uh, the, the, the platform coin, they issue 100% of that equal value coin to give it to the traders to, as a compensation. That's okay. And then they issue another 100% that's uh, freed from the team. Now yes. there's 200% in circulation now. Yes. Um, and then the, they give 20% referral bonus. So now there's 220% uh, uh, freed in circulation for 100% of the investments. So is it a kind of Ponzi scheme? I mean, is this printing money that's not backed by anything? Uh, well, it's basically the same as sell selling a uh, platform coin, which is fine. It's the same as an ICO. We sold our platform coin, but we sold it in a much more direct way. Uh, but I think now people, uh, I, I, I explained this logic a couple of days ago in an interview in China, and then they immediately stopped uh, mining. Uh, even Fcoin stopped mining now. So uh, once you explain the logic, people get, people get it, because with this, with 200% additional uh, 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 liquidity, and only 100% uh, money coming in. Assuming all of that buys it is not enough. The price will drop. Eventually. Right, right. so the price will drop, right? And then, uh, so some of the initial investors on the uptick, they made a lot of money. But now they're, uh, they're all looking for guys to sort of come in. So it's like a Ponzi scheme. If you're in, if you're in early enough, you'll yeah. make money. But if, you, if you're one of the last people in there, you inevitably will, will, will fall down. Yeah. And also for any business model, you've got to look at the long-term equilibrium. Let's say we finish all the mining, which by calculation they'll finish in a couple of weeks. Yes. Once you finish all the mining, then the traders will not have incentive to, 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 to generate large volumes. You'll be back to normal volumes. And who will pay a 0.1% fee versus our 0.03% fee to trade there? So people will not trade there. People, once, people, once the volume goes low, your, your dividend payout will, will drop. And guess what people will do to, your, to, your, to the coins they hold? They will sell, they will sell the platform coin. And also, um, okay, you can say, okay, I will, they will reduce the trading fees. Then, okay, that's another fee competition. They can go to zero, then, they, then their platform coins will be worth nothing. And they can't run a business because they don't have any income to run the business. Right, right. Yeah. So, and we are in a very high competitive space. We don't have enough people. We're hiring people like crazy. We're spending money like crazy. Uh, so, uh, running a good exchange requires money. Yeah. Do you see other exchanges as competition? And if yes, which exchanges worry you? So. I actually never view the other exchanges as competition because we don't compete with them. They, a lot of them wrongly view us as competition, but if you look at our strategy, when they're doing like uh, fiat exchanges, we are doing crypto to crypto. When, they are doing, when they follow us doing crypto to crypto, we are going to Africa. So we, and we go to Malta. I think a lot of people probably don't know Malta. A lot of people in the crypto space only know Malta because of us. Right. So, so what was the logic of going to Malta? Was it because of tax reasons? Or were there bigger reasons for you guys to go to Malta? I think the reasons are very simple. We, we interacted with the government a couple of months before that. They were really progressive. It's the people, right? So the, the, the regulators there, even though the law is still being shaped, uh, the regulators, are, they understand crypto. They understand blockchain. They're good people. They, they, they want, they're pro-business, pro-innovation. CZ, if we speak to you again in five years' time, what do you want to achieve? What do you want to be remembered for? So I want to be remembered as the guy who helped the world adopt crypto. So I, I, just, I, just, I just want to be remembered as CZ helped a little bit. 
Now, why is crypto so important? Why do you want to be remembered as the guy that helped the world ad uh, adopt crypto? Why is crypto so important to you? It's the freedom. It's the increase in freedom. If you look, if you look at throughout human history, every time there's an increase in freedom, the world changes for the better. Yes. The, the mass gets better, like the freedom of slavery, uh, the freedom of press, freedom of speech, and um, the freedom of knowledge, data, internet. Every time there's an increase in freedom, people's lives become better. So I think right now we're, we're, we're witnessing the freedom of investments, freedom of transactions, and freedom of money. So this is, I think this will help people's lives tremendously. And I just want to help a little bit. Now we're here in Taiwan. Do you like the Taiwanese approach? Do you think that they have a chance of becoming a blockchain hub, something like a Malta? I absolutely think so. I think Taiwan uh, moved slower than the other, some of the other islands. But slower is not necessarily bad uh, because we're still in the very early stages. I think Taiwan has the potential to get there. I think you can see that the regulators come to this uh, conference, uh, they make speeches, um, they welcome you to visit them, they walk them to us. We went there, have a meeting with them, took a bunch of photos. We never published that because we didn't want to cause any mis mis misunderstandings. They're, 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 they're totally cool. So I think I'm very confident. Now let's talk about Binance Labs. You started that to grow and incubate projects. What are the criteria for projects that go into Binance Labs? So I think for us, uh, Binance Labs wants to invest in blockchain infrastructure projects. So if you're working on a new type of blockchain, a new decentralized exchange, a new type of wallet, um, a, uh, a new type of mining, or like anything that helps the industry grow. So uh, we want to build out the infra industry infrastructure. Uh, and we look for strong technology teams. So if, you t if your team is a strong tech team, uh, that's, that's good. Uh, we don't care about marketing. Uh, if your marketing ability is low, we, we, we're okay with it. If your fundraising ability is low, if you don't know how to pitch your project, that's okay because we can help you on those other parts. So you want the actual tech. Everything else you guys can take care of as Binance Labs. Yes, so we want the actual tech team. So we want a tech side. So we, we love funders who are like tech driven. They say, okay, I, have, I don't know how to do marketing. I don't want to deal with finance. I don't want to deal with HR. We like those teams. What, what is your biggest challenge today? Is your biggest challenge today finding the right people? Yes, absolutely. So that's, that's where I want to spend most of my time on, like just finding the best people. So we're hiring. Anybody who wants to join Binance, if you're good at what you do, we're always hiring, every position. So speaking of distributed, where do you live? Actually, so I spend about a week everywhere. So there's a couple of questions very hard for me to answer. Where do you live? Where's your headquarter? Uh, where's your home? <laughs> so like, I live on Earth. <laughs> That's a simple. Do you have a home? I uh, actually I don't have a house. Do you have, do you have a car? I don't have a car. No house, no car. No house, no car. And every week you fly on commercial airlines yes. from place to place. Yes, I do fly business. It's more comfortable. Uh, I can afford it now. So, so I do fly business, but I fly commercial. I've never taken a private jet in my life so far. Until today, never, never a private jet. That's amazing. So, so much success and so humble. That's CZ from Binance, and I'm sure you'll agree with me. He's a man on a mission and very, very humble indeed. What a pleasure to have him on the show. Just a reminder that if you are watching us on YouTube, now is a great time to hit the subscribe button. And if you want to follow me on Twitter, I'm at CryptoManRun.